to the Across the Pod NFL podcast. I am, as ever, your host, Andy, and I'm here to preview week 13 in the NFL. And as I mentioned before, this will be our last podcast for a week as I'm away traveling next week. But nevertheless, we'll make this, make this show the best it can be. And with me, I've got a returning guest. You will all know him from Channel 5 and from National Vintage League. Back with me today is Chris Milner. Chris, first of all, how are things, mate? Mate, it's great to be back. I didn't know this was going to be a really big show. Lots of pressure now. Because <laughs> uh, I've got a terrible record on the show, I think. I've just got one of the yeah. worst out there. So, <laughs> yeah. yeah, always a lot of hope uh, and a lot of disappointment when I come on. But Classic here we are. Commander's fan attitude, that is. <laughs> yeah, I mean, all the hope is what's going to kill you. Exactly, exactly. And you've got a lovely, I think it's a Goldfinger in the background, the video game I can see in the background on your screen. One of the classic oh, old old PlayStation games. You've dropped two clangers there, Andy. Number one is Golden Eye, and number oh. two is an N64. Come on, <laughs> get your facts right. You always bring good facts, Andy. Decent research, and you just really just that was a couple of howlers. <laughs> you lo- you lost the gamer crowd already. They're going to flame you on Reddit for that forever. All of our small little game gamer um. Our small audience who are gamer, gamer nerds or gamer addicts, they're going to be screaming at their TVs right now, screaming at their right. phones. I mean, and I'll put, I, honestly, I've put, I'll put a, a, a public challenge out there now. If anyone ever wants to come down to the warehouse and challenge me at GoldenEye, one-on-one, license to kill, pistols, stack, I will, I will bet the entire money off whatever you want to buy. I will beat you. I will beat you. All right, okay. bring, your, bring your best game. It's not happening. The challenge is there. So for those who are listening or watching on YouTube, do DM Chris if you want a game. I'm sure he can um, link Beat you up Beat me with and get, get a free item from MVL if you can do it. You won't be able to. Well, I can get involved in that. I can, you know, begin, begin as well. You didn't even know the name of the game, Andy. <laughs> All right. I'll take you out 20-0. <laughs> I mean, my, I think my Call of Duty, when I used to play it, my KD was something like 0.07 or something. It was horrendous. It was, it was one of the worst... I think of all my friends when we used to play together, it was by far the worst, the worst KD. It was absolutely awful. I think we've talked enough about uh, gaming now. I think we've lost the NFL fans and the gaming <laughs> fans. So we might as well just crack on. Let's go on. So, yeah, we are here to predict all the winners from week 13. And just to recap on week 12, uh, it was myself and Aaron Fletcher from Sleep at Work. He got 13 right, which moves him joint to top of the table alongside the Magpie Channel's keg. I had 10. Uh, I had the Bills beating the Eagles, which almost was correct. And I stupidly predicted the Cardinals beat the Rams. But I'm hoping this week I can get back to winning ways and better score than last week. But, yes. Chris, you know, my, com- my computer's back on. There was a nightmare before. I've got my ring light now. Amazing. Well, perfect timing. I'm ready. Exactly. For for Thursday Night Football, as you know, the Seahawks, they host Dallas Cowboys. Um, I'm going to go for the Cowboys to win this game. I just feel like the Seahawks are just a bit too inconsistent at the moment. uh, And Dallas Cowboys are in good form. And Dak Prescott's playing maybe his best football since he got injured in 2020. Um, So you're going to give the Cowboys the win. How are you seeing the game, Chris? Andy, I've got a confession to make. I've played fantasy football for like 15 years. And I, I never draft Cowboys players, right, as pr- principal. And this year I drafted Sam Howell in all leagues, right? That's how in I was on the Commanders. I've got a confession to make. I bent Sam Howell for Dak Prescott against oh. us on Thanksgiving and battered my opposition, and I'm keeping him in the lineup. Howell's been benched in my fantasy. Dak's going, going to get a – they're going to the Super Bowl. Fucking – oh, sorry, I shouldn't swear, but yeah. No, I swear, the Cowboys. Yeah. No, it's Channel Five. I've got to, I've got to be for the kids, there, mate. You know, we're an after SpongeBob. I know my <laughs> demographic. <laughs> Keep it clean. I think I um, I beat Ash this week in our, in our league, the Hannah Wilkes league we're in, uh, her, her her huddle league. I actually beat Ash this week in in the most recent round. So um, oh no, pat on the back. Uh, what happened when we played each other? Good point. Yeah, let's not mention that. Thank you, Aaron Jones. Moving on. You. Right, next game. Let's go. <laughs> we will predict the Cowboys. Um, yeah, next off oh, next is Sunday, 6 p.m. The first game is in Indianapolis as the Colts take on the Titans. I think it's a pretty easy one to predict the Colts to win this game. The Titans, I know they won against the Panthers, but it's the Panthers and the Colts. I think right now they're in the seventh seed, so they're looking good, and I think they'll get the win in this game. I'm going to disagree with you. I think Jonathan, Jonathan Taylor is not going to be playing, probably. Uh, Gardner Minshew is iffy at best. 
Um, and I think the Titans actually have got a pretty good chance to to cause an upset here. Interesting. I like it. I, I love to see it because anything, anything Derek Henry based, I'm all, I'm all for. So I would love to see the Titans win. But exactly because yeah. I also own him in the league we're in. So I used oh, okay. him to beat you. Remember? <laughs> if you remember that. Yeah, I'm trying to forget that. It's all about beating Liz Bandari this week. That's my that's my goal this week. <laughs> um, next game is Vols the Jets as they travel to Atlanta to take on the Falcons. I think the Falcons win this game. I know they be, they themselves have been a bit inconsistent, but I just think the Jets at quarterback have just been that bad. We all saw what happened against the Dolphins and Black Friday. I think that will be their biggest Achilles heel and their defence will just keep them in the game. But I think the Falcons will ultimately win what I think will be quite a low-scoring game. But how are you seeing it, Chris? Well, you know I love the Falcons for one guy, for my guy. Uh, TH4, baby. Like... I don't even. I haven't even been watching. But any chance that there is to watch Taylor Heineke at any point, at any point in a game, is fun when you're not actually rooting for the team he's playing on. But I still think, yeah, Falcons are going to do it. And also, mm-hmm. I hope Bijan Robinson continues this trend of being the powerhouse that he is again. You know, there was that weird little few weeks where you know he wasn't doing anything, and everyone was really worried. And now he's, you know, I think, you know, feed Bijan. Let Taylor throw his little noodle arm slants to Bijan. Just give it to Bijan. Well, I think I looked at it before the most recent games. He and Algier had the exact same amount of carries. And also, Johnny Smith and Carl Pitts had the exact same amount of receptions as each other. So it seems to be a weird sort of thing where I don't think Arthur Smith knows when to use his best players. But I think we saw last week the two touchdowns he got in the game. He was electric and he was exactly what we expected to come out of college so I think you know with him and their team I think that's a team an offense that it's got everything really but the quarterback at the moment uh, maybe offensive line you could argue but um, I think ultimately I think they'll probably have, have too much in this game against the against the Jets but I think certainly if they you know, if they can trade up and go and get Caleb Williams or they go and get a good quarterback in free agency not I can think anyone who's available I think that could be a really team a real good team to look out for in the next you know two three four years Agree. Next. So, next game is in Detroit as the Lions, who had a shock loss to Ashes Packers on Thanksgiving, they host the New Orleans Saints. Um, Chris, who's winning this one? I mean, I think the Lions have a bounce back. You know, I'm all on board this Lions train. I think I a lot of fan bases that have had, you know, traditionally historically bad uh, success rates, like, you know, the Browns, Jets, Commanders, um, see the Lions as a beacon of hope, you know, in the same sort of way, the Bengals, you know, the Bengals were a terrible team for a very long time. Get Burrow, go to Super Bowl. You know what I mean? Like, same thing happened there. You know, you're seeing it again. Uh, it, and, and I hope that they, you know, have a deep playoff run. Really, I do. Because, you know, it would be such a great story. Um, so, yeah, I'm going for bounce back for the Lions. And also, I want Jameson Williams to get in the game more. I think they should throw, they should use Armand Ross and Brown as a dummy from now on. And just throw long deep balls to Jameson Williams as all game. That would be my dream. Is he, is he in your fancy team? He is, and I took a flyer on him because obviously he got injured and slipped. And I was like, well, this guy is really fast. Like, and Marvin Harrison Jr. is going to be the fastest ever. But Jameson Williams was so fast, Alaba. I was like, I'm going to stash him. And he's had a couple of big plays, but I just feel like you know, is he's, he's a vertical threat? They need to get involved a lot more. Yeah, and I've got him in one of my leagues, but I think that he is just so fast. I think that, you know, hopefully he's not a John Ross, but I think that if you got to be, that's you're half the way there as a wide receiver. And I think that if he can just get more targets, I think we could see him, whether it's this year, whether it's next year, I think we could see him really unleash. As long as he just doesn't get any more any more trouble off the field, I think that... But yeah, I mean, definitely. The other issue he's got is that, you know, Jared Goff, not known for his monster arm, and he's got Sam Laporta there who's turning into a complete stud, and obviously I'm on Ross and Brown. So, you know, Williams is there, but I'm mainly saying it because he's on my fantasy team. <laughs> and talking to the Saints, I don't know whether you saw uh, on the sidelines J- uh, Jameis Williams rapping to Derek Carr. Carr yeah. <laughs> Jameis was... William, J- James, um, James Winston is literally like, I'd love to see a 30 for 30 on him one day oh, because it's have you ever seen the footage of when he goes back to the house he grew up in no I've just seen a, that bro it is so ghetto 
And like they don't have a toilet, they just have a corner outside of the house where everyone used to just pee. <laughs> really? Like <laughs> it, it is so honestly, he grew up in abject poverty. And he it, you know, obviously, you know, he's had his, his fair run in, but his thirty for thirty season was great. You know, that's what they should call the thirty for thirty mm. is thirty for thirty when he had thirty touchdowns and thirty interceptions. Uh, I remember going with you to watch him. We were so excited to watch the Buccaneers come in London. James threw six picks. <laughs> and we left before the end of the game. And then we were just getting updates on the phone. Like, yeah, he's just thrown another one. It was <laughs> very funny to watch. Uh, but, yeah, uh, no, I don't. Yeah. I've got time for him, even though he's a moron. But, yeah, watch the thing about where he grew up. Seriously, it'll blow your mind. I'll have to do that. I mean, yeah, I think he's one of the, I think he's, you know, Everyone calls Kittle the people's tie, and I think he is the people's quarterback. And I think that everyone, everyone loves James Winston. And actually, he has got the 10th most passing yards in any NFL season. So he's a little bit of path history. Uh, that may get broken one day, but um, yeah, he was even, I think, before Brady, he was in top nine or top eight until Brady Mahomes did it. And yeah, that that amazing celebration that for those Thank watching you on YouTube can see, it's, um, yeah, Eating the W was one of my favourite pre-game speeches in NFL history. That's... Um, Amazing stuff. Um, next game, I think I found the hardest to predict. Uh, Denver Broncos, the team most in form right now, five straight wins as they host mm. the Houston Texans and Rookie of the Year, shoe in uh, CJ Stroud. Um, for me, I'm going to give the Denver Broncos the win. I just think, I think both offenses are playing really well, but I just back the Denver defense more than the Texans defense. That's the only reason why. And the Denver Broncos were at home, so me, I'm going to give the Broncos a win. But what about what about you, Chris? Do you know what? I think this game is going to go, it's going to be a high scoring game. It's going to go to overtime. It's going to end on uh, a winning field goal and it could go either way. I think it's going to be a really, really good game to watch this one. And if you had to put any sort of money on it, who would it be to win? Well, no, I've just given you the answer. I'm sitting firmly on the fence. It's going to be neck and neck all the way. And then it's going to end... One of them's going to win, but it's going to end because, you know, there'll be like an offensive holding call or like something dumb or encroachment and a penalty or, you know, a flag's getting thrown for everything these days. You know, it is, it's every game now is like the Olympics opening ceremony. I've never seen so many. Like, you're a defensive end, you can't sack the quarterback. You're a cornerback, you can't touch the receiver. You know, you can't take your helmet off. You can't celebrate. You know, it's, it's becoming almost ridiculous to watch, but. You know, there we go. It's that's what's going to happen. It's going to be a controversial ending. Someone's going to win on a field goal. I hope the Texans. Okay, we'll put the Texans down for that one. Um, next up is a game I don't think really I want to watch. Um, Patriots. If that happens, Andy, you've got to mention that, right? That if that that prediction happens, that's got to be the greatest prediction of all time. Oh, it will be. I mean, it'll be on YouTube. So you know, if certainly if um that does happen, I'll (laughs) put on TikTok. (laughs) Watch the watch, watch the watch the Texans just get blown out by the Broncos now. <laughs> just throw up eighty nine points. All right, yeah, sorry. Okay, yeah. Oh. So Texans by 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 a whisker. Amazing. Um, yeah, Chargers Patriots. I don't think I anyone wants one wants to watch that game. Brandon Staley against right. Mac Jones. Absolutely not. But someone's got to win it, and I think the Chargers. Yeah, I think so too. So next up is the final, the second to last lot of the six pm slate is in Arizona as they host the Steelers. Um, for me, I'm going to go for Steelers. Uh, I just think their defence alone will win in games, and I, I just don't think there's much in his Arizona offence to really cause much problems, even if I think their offence is struggling a little bit as well. Um, so I'm going to give the Steelers the win. Yeah, I'm inclined to go the Steelers, but like, if you actually look at how bad their offence is, apart from their sort of run game, it is Kenny Pickett is absolutely terrible. Like... George Pickens was supposed to be really good. And the, it just is so painful to watch how badly they're playing. Like, you know, did you see that footage of like Deontay Johnson putting in zero effort you know, on his like yes. run on the sideline? Yeah. Like that sign up sums up the Patriots offense for me at the moment. So I think you're right, the D will win them the game, but there could be an upset on this one. But I think, yeah, maybe Steelers. And amazing, they still got winning record. They still, you know, they're still in the playoff hunt right now. So it's amazing that it shows you what oh. how good a good defense is. I mean, and that's why the Niners are now so scary with Chase Young, you know, because they've got an absolutely terrifying defense. Um, but yeah, you're right. So the final game, which is the reason why I bought you one, is my team against your team as the Commanders 
travel to the Dolphins in Miami. Um, Chris, I'll let you go first. How are you seeing this game? Absolute blowout win for the Commanders. You're going to get donkeyed. You're going to get, <laughs> it's going to be 66-3. No, I mean, obviously we're going to lose. It would be amazingly funny if we didn't. And that would be a very Commanders thing to happen, right? Just every, like, we're a trap team for literally every team. Uh, you know, everyone goes, we should beat this team, hands down. But there's always a chance they're going to, you know, throw a little banana, put a banana in the tailpipe. And that's why I hope we're going to do, is put a little banana in the tailpipe. But again, in another league, I'm starting two over Sam Howell. So I don't believe enough in my team to actually back them in fantasy purposes, but it would be nice to actually see one because I've watched, obviously Thanksgiving was battering. That was, you know, painful to watch that. You can watch that on Channel 5, me reliving that. It's going to be on this week. Uh, Ash, you know, does a little montage of me being in pain. Uh, before that, you know, we lost last minute um, to the Giants on the pick six. It was pretty fitting uh, before that. And that was on a potential game time drive. Before that, you know, we lost to the Seahawks on the field goal uh, that, you know, you know, if we'd stopped that, we would have taken it to overtime. Before that, it was, it was, it's just always heartbreaking losses, you know. And Thanksgiving was really sort of like as bad as it could get. We fired Jack Del Rio, which was, I think was a good move. I think, you know, Ron's going to get fired too. I hope we bring in, you know, some young, you know, exciting, you know, defensive coordinators and offensive coordinators and, uh, you know, and, and really plan for next season now. But it would be nice if, if we ruined your afternoon. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, I think, you know, we almost lost to the Raiders a few weeks ago and, you know, we made it at one point a close game against the Jets with two, two interceptions. Obviously, the pick six from Javon Holland and touchdown ended up from the Hail Mary. Didn't end up killing the game. But I think that, you know, with us being 5-0 and at home and really having no real issues at Hard Rock so far this year, I think we will ultimately get the win. But I do think, you know, Sam Howell's a passing out leader for a reason. He's a good quarterback. And I think when you've got people like Terry McLaurin, Jahan Dotson, Curtis Samuel, Brian Robertson in the run game, I think it's a good offense. And I think that, um, you know, there's definitely things to be positive about with the commander. I know, obviously, defense being a bit of a different story. but um, And I think that will be ultimately, you know, Tyree Kill, Jalen Waddle, Raheem Most are going to give that defense. Also, can I, they're all going the time. to eat us up when on our defensive end depth is thin now because obviously prayers up fa you know broke his leg um you know i've spoken to him he's fine he says it's a clean break because you know he's he's okay um but you know that was devastating for you know not only me as a friend of his but for commanders fans and and nfl uk fans you know around the country you know because that guy's you know a legend for all of us um and it was so sad to see him have that chance, that opportunity with Chase and Sweat gone to, you know, really cement his place and, you know, go, go, go hard. And in fact, you know what I mean? I'm going to admit something now. I think I jinxed him because he did a little story, right, of his locker before the game. And I just responded like, yes, mate, big day, two and a half sacks incoming. Now's your time. First quarter breaks his leg. And then like my next text was like, I'm so sorry I jinxed it. Please forgive me. A broken heart emoji. How do you respond to that? It's fine. I mean, he was in surgery, so like, and he was probably getting texted by literally a million people. Mm. But like, he got back to me. Yeah, he got back to me a couple of days later. They just texted me, texted rather than DM, told me, and uh, he's fine. I mean, it sucks, but your offense is going to destroy us. And the thing about our offense is, yeah, Sam Howell's the passing answers, but think about this: he's there whilst also on pace to. Um, David Carr's 2005 sack record. So he's been sacked so many times, yet has still managed to get that many passing yards. And I mean, like, if you protect that guy, you give him a bit of time in the pocket, he's going to cause damage. But he isn't getting that. You know, he's got to roll out and all this sort of stuff. So, you know, that's what we've got to improve. We've got to get a better offensive line and, you know, defense needs work. Um, and hopefully we get a good new coordinator into bring the best out of what we've got so far. And a potential yeah. high draft pick as well. So that should hopefully get you some sort of stud, whether it's offensive well, line. Well, we've got like, we've got, I mean, Andy, we've got three in the first 40 picks, you know, four in the first 50. Um, and, you know, that's why I'm going to say Commander's upset over the Dolphins this week. At the end. 
<laughs> I mean, that, that'll be upsetting. It's a dub. <laughs> Especially with you know, the Bills playing the Chiefs, is a great chance to really cement that AFC East. Um, so yeah, hopefully not the case. Um, now the first lot of late games, nine oh five PM for those listening in the UK. As the Carolina Panthers, who just recently fired Frank Reich, they host the Buccaneers. And for me, I was tempted to go Panthers because with you know a different coach being there, they might give them a little bit, a bit of a fresh bounce. But I just think the Buccaneers will ultimately just about get it done against the Panthers. But how are you seeing it, Chris? The, uh, the NFC South is the new AFC South. Mm. It is so bad, right? And the irony is Frank Wright was the Panthers quarterback in the expansion team years, which is so funny that he was like there throwing the ball for them and now he's getting fired because they're 1-10. and 10. Um, And it's stupid because it's like you had the first overall pick, you know, and you shanked it. And, you, and then you were going to have the first overall pick again this year, but no, the Bears have got it. So... You know, it's a disaster over there. You can't predict them winning. Winning, you know. No. Christian McCaffrey's departure was the death of the Carolina Panthers. <laughs> yeah. When FA left and Christian left, they were done. Yeah, I mean, it's they're sort of trapped now because they're having such a bad year, but they can't get a draft pick. There's no light in the tunnel because they haven't got a draft pick as a reward for being bad. So really, they're just stuck now. I mean, Bryson could turn it around. It's only been his rookie year, but. When watching C.D. Stroud, which will always be a bit like two with Herbert in the first few years, It'll always be on his back now. The fact that Stroud was taken next, and Stroud, you know, has been so good for the Texans. He's, I said before, shooing for Rookie of the Year, certainly on offense. And you know, I think he'll always, until he improves, he'll always have that on his sort of on his back. The fact that they did take Stroud after after Young, so I think it's tough, a tough break for um a tough break for him. But the next game is. By far the game of the week, one of the games of the season, a repeat of last year's NFC Championship game. Although hopefully this year we get a more even contest as the 49ers host the Eagles in Levi Stadium. Um, Chris, I'll let you go first because I'm still admiring who to pick. Um, who are you taking in this game? This is a difficult one for me because in a way I, I want both teams to not do well, but for different reasons. Obviously, I never want to root for the Eagles, uh, you know, divisional rivalry and all that. But at the same time, I don't really want to root for the Niners because there's a really, and I hate to admit this, there's a really sort of sadistic part of me that, you know, when a player leaves to go to another team from your team that you liked and thought was going to be good, there's a bit of you that hopes they're not going to do very well on the other team. And so part of me hopes just Chase Young loses <laughs> Fair. Um, and I've got AJ Brown in one fantasy league, so sure, I'll go for the Eagles in this one. Hey, I, I know what you mean. I mean, I find it hard to root against Mike Gazicki, but um, it would be a shame if he went on and absolutely killed it, whether it's New England or somewhere else. But um, I get what you mean. But I'm going to go for the Niners. I'm just being very, that was being very vulnerable and honest there. You know, I think there's everyone can admit deep down there's a little part of them that feels that way. You know, and I love it when they go and they're really, and they are, and like, for example, um, Lorenzo Alexander, right, was our special teams captain. And we never played him at linebacker. He goes to the Bills and he goes to the Pro Bowl in his first year as, as a linebacker. I was actually really happy for him because it's like, yeah, we completely misused you. And it, it was to our detriment, you know, just, you know, perfect example as well. When you had the, the coaches under Jay Gruden, right, that was, you know, Mike McDaniel, Matt LaFleur, Carl Shanahan and, and Sean McVay. And we let them all go. <laughs> yeah. I don't wish ill on any of them. I wish ill on my own organisation. But, you know, Chase Young, for me, yeah, part of me really rooted for him, like, you know, and, and, I, and I wanted us to keep him, and so I was annoyed. And, you know, Trent Williams went there as well, and I understand why Trent Williams went, because, you know, it was literally medical malpractice by the commanders, and, you know, I would have done the same thing, but it just sucks, because they could have been our two best players, and now they're both just just playing for the Niners and, and swapping bad commander stories between each other and having a good laugh while they go to the NFC Championship game. Yeah, I mean, it's... And I ha- don't know how to feel about it, Andy! <laughs> I mean, how you had those three coaches and still didn't have any of them as your head coach, and or it, it, it seems crazy to me. But I have actually, I've got a gift, not a gift, I've got a, a prompt for this episode. From FedEx Field, I've got this. I don't know whether you... It's one, I don't know, I think they're like sort of things to make you keep your drink warm. I think that's what they are. I don't know what they are. I've seen they're called, they're called, they're called, they're called beer koozies. 
I've so got, I've got, so I've got a, a Packers one from when I was with Ash, and also an Eagles one. I've never know what to do with them really, but um, yeah, a, a little gift from FedEx. I got like a little thing on my seat saying, "Your winner, go to this section and get your prize." I thought I'd be getting all sorts, but turns out I only got that. But still pretty cool. Check out, ch- check out what I just got the other day, right? Go on. Oh, New first. York Giants. Okay. Oh, is that from the first London game? First ever London game. That's amazing. Two thousand and seven. Can I, can I have that, please? Um, <laughs> the program. Oh, that that's really cool. That must be so, really hard to find. I tell you what, we'll do, Andy. Right, we will figure out a way to give those away to either you or if you want to do it for charity or a lucky fan or if you're raising money for anything or if you think of someone out there in the community that would be deserving of those pieces of NFL history, I would be happy to give them up to them um, if it was going to a worthy cause. You know, just let me know. Like, drop a little thing on, on Twitter. You know, people let me know if they were there, if, you know, they got taken by their dad or whatever. Happy to try and reunite someone with uh, with some nostalgia and some memories. Um, so that's what we do, baby. National Vintage League. That is actually a really cool because we are actually doing a charity league this year where the winner's of the league gets their chosen charity donated. So what we could do, if everyone donates to the pot like five pounds or something like that, add to the pot, and then the winner of that draw can get the thing. And that's maybe somewhere we could do it that way because that would be a really cool. Yeah, raffle, raffle it. You could do you could do raffle tickets that will mm. get donated to the charity, and then draw a raffle, and the winner gets the thing. Yeah, um, I think that's really good idea. We'll definitely DM and talk about that off off camera, and we'll get something sorted. No we out. Probably this week or next week, and that should be um yeah, should should be quite fun. Um yeah. now moving on to the last lot of the late slate, uh it's all well, the nine o'clock. Oh, I, I thought that was I thought that was it. That was gonna be the big finale. No, That's stop, what I was giving you when you needed that. like, oh the big show. I was like, oh damn. <laughs> Dude, I um, forgot how long this thing is. <laughs> all right, let's go. So second the next game is probably not one of the most glamorous ones, but Browns host the Rams. I'm gonna go for the, the Rams. I think the DTR. Honeymoon period is over then with, I think, the Rams will ultimately get a win. Uh, how are you seeing it, Chris? I want the Rams to win because Sean McVay, you know, someone we let go. And I, and I like seeing, I always love seeing how meticulous his beard and hair is. It's been the most consistent thing in my life over yeah. the past six years is Sean McVay's beard and hair. I don't know how he keeps it exactly the same length. It's amazing. He, he always reminds me of um, Hank Scorpio on The Simpsons. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Even the voice is very similar. So whenever I see that episode, I always think of Sean McVay when when I see that. You know, you know, he's got a photographic memory. Yeah, I've seen, seen him a... like, yeah, with, the, he... with the with the play, right? play calls, giving him play calls from like seven years ago, and you know exactly yeah. what happened. He's one of my favorite head coaches. I I really happy. In really fact, oh, sports. and a funny story, photographic memory. This is a good segue, and it involves the Miami Dolphins. So, and Dominican Sue also photographic memory, and he was on the sidelines and doing some stuff for uh, NFL UK during the games this year. And I met him years before when I had nothing to do with the NFL, when I was working in America in a hotel and the Miami Dolphins came to the hotel and I was like running the event, the banquet event. So like where they were eating, I was like making sure they, you know, had all the breakfast buffets out. And he just got traded there, right? And no one was sitting with him. He sat on his own on the table of 10. He was on his own. He looked so scary. And uh, and I remember looking at him and actually feeling sorry for him because all of the other players were all sitting together and literally he was sitting on his own, just eating breakfast. And uh, and I saw him on the sideline. I was, I was like, hey, I'm Chris, blah, 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 and introduced myself. I was like, I don't know if you remember, but this happened. And he was like, I remember. Like that is mad. That is you know insane. I mean? That is so it's good. Mad because that was literally ten years. Um, you know, hmm. mad how how the world is so small in that way. But... Well, I actually got the luxury of speaking to him as well on the sidelines. At, um, I believe it was was it Ravens Titans. I think it was. And I told him he's my first ever NFL jersey was a Dominican Sioux Dolphins, and I think he quite liked that. So hopefully, if he comes again to the UK, hopefully he'll remember that as well. Yeah, and and Ash would hate him. Packers hate him. He was he was a, such a menace to him. I was supposed to love it, you know. Um, speaking of the Packers, actually, um, Sunday night football 
Packers host the Chiefs. It's Mahomes' first ever game at Lambeau Field, um, which is something I didn't think was true. Oh, wow. It is. So, yeah, I think, you know, you can't. You know, the Chiefs have been a bit, I think, a bit on offense recently, a bit stale, but I think I think they'll get a job done. I think they'll find a way. It's what they do. They're the newest dynasty in the league, and I think they'll, they'll find a way to beat the Packers. What's the weather forecast? Good point. Um, I don't know. Let me have a look. So, it's good. BBC because weather. If it's... Because if it's snow, I'm going to call it the Chiefs. Because I don't think Jordan Love is Aaron Rodgers when it comes to playing in the snow. I don't think he's having had enough experience of that Lambo fighting cold. But Mahomes is good in the snow. So according to BBC Weather, it's going to be light rain and a gentle breeze. What What's the temperature though? Uh, it says five degrees Celsius, but underneath minus one, which I'm guessing means feels like minus one. Um, it just needs to get to four for snow. If it snows, Chiefs all the way. Okay. Um, and then final game is Monday Night Football. It's probably, you know, definitely would be more sexy if Burrow was playing as a matchup. But Bengals take on the Jags. Um, I'm going for the Jags purely because Burrow is injured. I think if Burrow is playing, I'd have them winning. So, yeah, that's the pure reason for why I'm going for the Jags to beat the Bengals. Yep, definitely. And I just picked up their defence. So, yep, 100% Jags all the way. Right, so that is the last of our prediction. So in the end, we've had two scores that have been different from each other. So we've both gone for wins for the Cowboys, Falcons, Lions, Chargers, Steelers, Dolphins, Bucks, Knights, or Bucks, Rams, Chiefs, and Jags. But we've all gone for three, actually, rather than two. I've gone for the Colts to beat the Titans. Chris went for the Titans. Chris went for the Texans to beat the Broncos. I went for the Broncos. And Chris went for the Eagles to beat the Niners. And I went for the Niners. So yeah, three different scores. And hopefully we can try and top the leaderboard come next week yeah and big surprise i don't know if i showed you this but this is a scarf from the first ever nfl london game and i've got the program so you know i was thinking and i just came up with this we should do some sort of charity gift now we ruined it already Andy. you ruined it <laughs> i ruined so, yeah that's still on that's fine and also my public challenge is still on to come down and play what Andy earlier called Goldfinger on a PlayStation. <laughs> um, but yeah, if you want to come down and license to kill Pistol Stack, you can beat Odd Job. You can be Moonraker Elite 2. Doesn't matter. You're going down. I'll play, well, play for jerseys. Certainly DM Chris and he can get that sorted for you. And yeah, we will uh, look at putting out a tweet at some point with that um, potential prize for you listeners or viewers on YouTube um, as you could potentially win that programme and win the scarf. I'm actually going to apply for it myself as well. So yeah, hopefully I yeah. can actually win that, but um, hopefully one of you will as well. But um, in the meantime, this has been the Across the Pod NFL podcast. Thank you to Chris once again for coming on. I've been your host, Andy, and we will see you guys for our next episode.